All right, welcome back. Well, a new report from the CDC shows that healthcare worker burnout is higher than it's ever been, and it's certainly higher than pre-pandemic levels. And as we get towards the end of the year, you might be feeling burnout in your own job. So we are on your side today with some advice on how you can avoid burnout in the workplace. Michelle Esri, the owner of Fullwell Neurofeedback in Hoover, joins us with six tips to help you avoid burnout. Michelle, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Claire. So I feel like this is, this can be pretty common, and I feel like people go sort of through waves with this. Uh, just tell us a little bit about maybe uh, some of the signs or how you might know if you're experiencing burnout. You know, burnout, um, it can present a lot of different ways. You can have emotional, physical, interpersonal symptoms. So what that means is you might be having just kind of exhaustion or fatigue, you may be finding that you're losing your drive to do things at work, you're not motivated, and eventually maybe even just start to feel bad and like you don't want to interact with people. And it can sort of start to look like depression towards the end, right, when you start to burn out and you just sort of run out of steam. It's almost like what it sounds like, right? You've burned yourself down to almost nothing. And um, and there are a lot of reasons for it, but that that's really what you start to look for when you're looking for burnout. So we have some tips. We found these uh, from a toolkit online, um, and I've broken them up um, into two groups, three and three. Uh, so I want to start with the first one, uh, working with a purpose. T talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, one of the things that can lead to burnout is feeling like you are doing something for no reason or there's not any purpose in what you're doing. So in a work environment, if we don't feel like our job is purposeful, it can be really kind of discouraging to go and do the same thing every day. And so working with a purpose, you can do this in any role, right? Let's say you're working with numbers, you can still find purpose in your work. You doing a good job at work could be helping other people um, be able to do their job well. It could be saving the company money. If that doesn't matter to you, it could be awesome. making money for your family could be the purpose of your work, right? There needs to be some reason that you do what you do or it begins to feel more demeaning or demanding than it should. I, I think you said it very well just there. Um, a next, The next tip is to eliminate unnecessary work. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, one of the things you can do often, <laughs> we'll <laughs> kind of pick up extra work along the way that the job that we are hired for may or may not be the role that we are actually performing. We may have picked up these roles over here in addition to what we typically do. And so doing a bit of an analysis of what your job is and being able to say, okay, are there things I can take out that I'm doing? If I'm feeling under the pile, can I get rid of some things? Can I give them to other people to do? Can I just get rid of them completely? And that can be a way to kind of clear some space and prevent burnout. All right. And then um, another tip is to give to others. Tell us a little bit about that. Do you know that's kind of on the purpose side of things, right? It, uh, if we are feeling trapped in our job, sometimes we can make the environment better by helping those around us, right? And that can make it so that even if the job itself is hard, we can feel purposeful in what we're doing. We can give to those around us. We can make their job easier. We can serve the people that we're serving with our job, whatever it is. If we're doing that, it can make our job more rewarding and more purposeful. Oh, the holidays coming up, that might be a good time to step up and find, and there's lots of opportunities uh, to give to others year round, but especially during the holidays. So that might be a good one to tackle coming up, right? Yes, absolutely. Giving to others really brings us joy. It's amazing how much that feels reciprocal when we do it. I love that. Okay. So taking a look at the next group, um, actively manage your time. What does this mean? You know, there is... Um, when we feel like we have no power in our roles or in our jobs or in our time, um, it can be really discouraging. And so taking a little bit of ownership, um, whether that means asking your boss for the freedom to do that, right? A little bit of autonomy or just setting aside specific times to do things. If you can take some control, right? You can manage your time in some way. You can say, I'm going to stop working at this time. I don't have anybody telling me I need to work more than this, so I'm going to control this area, and I'm going to go do this or this instead, or I'm going to, um, you know, another way to say it is I'm going to make some decisions about my work, and I'm going to see if it's okay if I make some choices, and I, I, if you have a micromanaging boss, this can be harder, so it's easier to control outside of it, but anytime you have the ability to feel like something is within your power, it, it helps to prevent burnout. And obviously, I think, too, um, 
and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you probably want to limit your time at work. Uh, you don't want to work 50, 60 hours a week because I think that can lead to burnout. You are exactly right. If you don't have a barrier or a boundary between the rest of your life and your work life, it is really easy to go down the path of burnout, right? Like you, yes. if you're working 80 hours a week, um, or if you're getting calls in the middle of the night, now some jobs require that, but a lot don't. And so if you don't have to do that, if you don't have to look at your email first thing, if you can wait, um, it can really help you have a little more space and margin and prevent burnout. I love that. Okay. This next one, I think you and I both love and can get on board with, but get more exercise. Absolutely. You know, one of the very best things you can do for your body is move as far as longevity and health goes, but especially even in reducing stress. I know I've said to you before in some of these things that um, one of my primary coping mechanisms is to exercise. And the reason for that, one of the reasons is that it helps your body release and manage its stress. So it actually balances your hormones. It pushes some of those, it re releases tension in your muscles. It does a lot of really good things and it can really help you deal with in a practical way. Like it gives you something to do to help deal with stress. And that's our last point, learn to manage stress. So right. obviously exercising and taking care of your body. Uh, it, it, any, can you elaborate on this a little bit more? Yeah. You know, even small stressors can kind of add up over time, right? Sorry. Even the small stressors can sideline us if we can't manage it well. And so exercise and things like that are one way. Reducing your stress, kind of like what we said in the other points, is another. And then finally, um, doing the other things you can do to bring yourself down from stress, right? Like I know I talk about um, yeah. being careful, but really all that means is over time to calm yourself down and get away from the things that are causing you stress. So managing stress is getting rid of the things you don't need, calming yourself down, taking breaks, like putting boundaries, all of those things are ways to manage your stress and prevent, again, that burning out that, that, just oh, yeah, yeah. that you can get. And it seems like you can apply these to other aspects of your life, not just your work life. And um, so I think they're good tips all around. Yes. I mean, we're talking about work, but your family life can be, lead to burnout also. Wherever you need the boundaries or feel out of control, any of those things can lead to burnout the same way a work life can. So you're absolutely right. All right. Well, Michelle Essery, the owner uh, of Full Well Neurofeedback and Counseling in Hoover, we appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire.